quick couple of questions. Firstly, I'd just like to say uh, how excited we are about being over here. This tournament's taken a wee while to arrive, four years, and uh, probably the last week's felt like four years. So, a lot of training, a lot of planning, and we've got a group of men who are really just itching to get out there and get started. So, uh, looking forward to tonight's game. It's going to be special. First uh, game of any tournament special, so England, Fiji. I'm sure we'll see a rousing performance from both teams and uh, hopefully the country uh, will get all behind the World Cup and um, wherever we go it'll be exciting and it'll be great to connect up with the, the people around the country. Is a relatively straightforward um, team to pick or did it take quite a bit of painting over? Pretty straightforward in the day, yeah. Um, obviously we've got another game in four days time so that was taken into consideration. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day pretty straightforward. Is the bench maybe the hardest part to pick your team? Uh, no, not really. No. I think um, but we, we, we've got 31 players who could you know, step up and start in any of the test matches. Um, but you, you just got to look at who you're playing and get your combinations right and, and then sort out what you want on your bench. You know, do you want back three cover? Do you want midfield cover, for example? Um, do you want uh, you know, three locks or... In this case, we've got another game four days' time, so using the only three locks we've got would mean they'd all have to play both games, so we don't want to do that. Steve, you've been involved in some pretty good games. What does this mean on Sunday at Wembley, of all places, in front of <coughs> excuse me, 90,000 in a World Cup pool game? Yeah, well, that's, that's uh, impressive in itself, isn't it? You know, there's a lot of history coming with Wembley. I've never been there um, personally myself uh, from a game point of view. Um, and I don't think too many of the players have. So, but we all understand and, and know the history of Wembley, and uh, it's a special arena and special history. And you know, history seems to excite this team a wee bit. So that'll be good. And you know, 92, 93,000 people uh, doesn't get any better than that. So it should be good. Are you nervous, Steve? No. No, I don't think so. I don't thought I looked nervous. Yeah, you're very relaxed. Yeah, well, I felt relaxed. Yeah. Taking the time, like you can't, it's no point getting nervous. Like, um, yeah, it's a game of rugby and it's really <coughs> important, but it's a game of rugby at the end of the day, and we want to win this thing, of course we do. But we, we've got to earn the right to win it, and uh, and you you do that by your preparation. And the more you prepare, and the better you prepare, the the more confidence you have in, internally, and um, you know. So that Saturday, in this case Sunday, is going to that's a fun time of the week, you know. So you look, should look forward to that. And uh, we are. And I am. I, I can't wait. You often speak of players playing the game too early. Is that is that a little bit of a concern here this Sunday, getting too excited? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. I think, I, but I think that's for everybody in this tournament. You know, because of the excitement of the tournament and, and the fact uh, yeah, it, it's the pinnacle of everybody's career, whether you play for New Zealand, England, Argentina, Japan, you know, this is the place you want to be at. And um, until you get the first one out of the way, it seems to, you know, you're like a duck sitting on the pond, you're just treading water underneath, but uh, sitting still on the top. And, uh, you know, we're probably sick of treading water, we want to get moving. Steve, um, how difficult will it be against Argentina? Obviously, you've seen their rolling mall, and in particular, their pack, they're a big unit. Yeah, they're a big unit and they're a good unit. Like we, we've got to know them pretty well over the last few years uh, with them coming into the rugby championship. Um, so we'd, we'd expect a, a real physical battle, but they've got some classy backs too. So um, and look, and what we know about Rugby World Cups is everybody, every team will play at a higher ability than they have prior to whatever they've done before they get here. Everyone gets up for it and uh, you know, we'd expect that from Argentina. No team has defended the Rugby World Cup. Just how difficult will it be to, to do so? Well, I think you know, your question answers the your statement answers the question. You know, how difficult? It's, no one's done it before, so it must be difficult. Um, but it doesn't mean so it can't happen. And someone's going to have to do it first. And we're the only ones in this tournament that have got an opportunity. So um, again, though, I want to emphasise that. Uh, you, you know, we learned in 07, you look too far ahead, you get on a plane and go home. So we'll just worry about Argentina this week and 
and the Nibia the next game and so forth and so forth. It's an old cliche, but it's, uh, it's one that we've, uh, we're hanging on to. Do you feel as though you've given your team, though, the mental tools to be able to deal with that? Deal with what? Right? Deal with the, the possibility of becoming the champions. You've come here to do it. You, you've talked a lot about the mental side of it and changing mindsets and that sort of thing. Do you think you and Gilbert have given the, the guys the tools to deal with that, to get the right focus? I think we've created an environment within the group uh, that allows us to, to play good rugby and um, in doing so win some games uh, comfortably, win some other games uh, not so comfortably. I think back to Ireland and Dublin, like, that was a tough, tough win and I think that, that showed that we've got the mental strength uh, to get the job done. Um, Australia, you know, in the last couple of months there. And of course, you know, we're capable of losing too because we've done that three times as well. I chuck a couple of draws in, so you know, the, this team has got a lot of talent and it's got a lot of self-belief. Uh, it now just needs to have the, the hunger and the desire and, and the work ethic and, and use the luck we get. Like we'll get our share of luck and we'll get our share of bad luck. How we use uh, that luck and how we deal with the bad luck um, you know, will determine how far we go into this tournament. But you know, I'm confident that what we've done the last four years has put us in pretty good shape to give it a good rattle. Steve, you've been, have you been to officiating meetings? They had Officiating meeting. Officiate, yeah. Is that for fishing or? Generally. <laughs> <coughs> um, oh, you're all right, I was like that myself. Right? <laughs> um, have they had a sit down with all the coaches? Yeah, yeah, they had everybody. And uh, what's, what's the thing I'm looking at? What are the things? Oh, the like? usual, same stuff. Yeah. So, won't bore you with it. But, you know, they're looking at the, the, uh, the tackle, no hands on the ground. They're looking, you know, closely at foul play, which is great. Um, the collision in the air, so it's got to be a fair contest. <coughs> uh, scrummaging straight. Um, yeah, so they're the key ones. Steve, yeah, what's your level know? of confidence that the things that you've been told by the referees will actually be what you see play out over the next six years? <laughs> Why don't you just give me a shotgun and <laughs> shoot myself? Um, <laughs> well, all I know is the, the game is extremely difficult to read. And uh, yeah, the most difficult area in the game at the moment is the breakdown and, um, and the offside, you know, because the ref's so busy looking at, at the breakdown. Um, all we want is them to be consistent in the one match. That's all I ask. If, you know, they're going to miss some things and you know, we just got to deal with it. Um, and, and I'll make mistakes, just like... I do as a coach and, and our players do as players and again we just have to deal with it. But if they can be consistent, if, if uh, that's offside today, then that's offside for the whole game, uh, as an example. And if they do that, then you know, no one's got any complaints. Uh, yeah. Steve, you mentioned the, the Irish game in Dublin. How important was that in terms of the, the mental side of things? How, how important was it to win that match in Dublin? Yeah, pretty important at the time. Um, was it important in the development of that mental strength you're talking about in the old likes? Well, yeah, I think it is, yeah, like there's no doubt about that, like, particularly for the young guys, um, you know, the older guys and, and your leaders, uh, they've been there before and done it, um, but, you know, the calmness and the clear-headedness to be able to, to get the process of what we did uh, in those last couple of minutes, um, it is massive and for a young player to go through that and realise actually if I do stay calm and I do concentrate on what I have to do right here and right now rather than you know, worrying about what's on the scoreboard, uh, you know, anything's achievable and, and it does give the young players a lot of confidence, no doubt about that. Steve, do you watch a lot of games in the next two or three days and, and, and how much of a gauge do you get off those games from other teams if, if so? Well I enjoy rugby you know, from a spectator's point of view, and there's some good games going to be on. Um, there'll be some teams we'll look at with a little bit more interest. Uh, we've got analysts over here, you know, they'll be the ones doing a lot of the recording, and, and when the time comes, we'll look at whomever it is that we, we're playing with a little bit more depth. But, like, tonight's game is going to be fantastic, I you know, I'm not sure how many, how big Twickenham holds now, is 86 years ago. And you know, they'll put on a, a show, won't they, beforehand, so that'll be good. And 
and then you know letting two teams uh, go at it. And the Fijians sound like they're really up for it, so that's going to be exciting. And you know the English are. They'll be up for it, it's home game. So it should be an exciting way and, and hopefully the rugby is really high quality and, and the people are, uh, you know, throughout the country and all around the world, you know, realise, wow, this is going to be something special. Steve, do you think the rugby championship has improved the depth of Argentinian rugby? Have you seen that over your time? Um, yes and no. Am I qualifying? Yes. But, um, look, getting exposed to playing teams like ourselves, South Africa and Australia every year in a tournament type fashion I think has improved it. Um, the biggest problem with it though is most of their players have been coming out of Northern Hemisphere seasons and I don't think you know, they're coming off a hard season, not getting any um, opportunity to uh, have an off season, pre-season so to speak, uh, so it's been tough for them in that respect. I think with Super Rugby coming, you know, them, with the people they're signing, it's just about the Argentinian team that signed, so it's going to be a heck of a strong super side. And I think that'll really expose them again to more and more high quality uh, rugby um, as a team, rather than individually, individuals being scattered all over you know, the world. And you know, I, th I think they'll improve dramatically because of that. Do you think then that given the lead-in time, the conditioning time, all of that, that it makes Argentina, who are always dangerous at a Rugby World Cup, even more dangerous than they have been in previous tournaments? Yeah, well, they'll be really dangerous. They've already beaten South Africa this year, um, and they beat them well. Uh, I, I think they've handled their preparation really well. They've given a, a large uh, group of them some time to have a pre-season. Um, while the Rugby Championship was on, they didn't play their best side, I don't think, the whole tournament. Um, because guys were, were off either injured or, or you know, working in a pre-season type environment. Um, so this team they named today will probably be you know, the first time they've really named their best side. And you know, when they're at their best, they're very good. Steve, do you, um, do you tell your players to embrace the tournament, get out and watch as many games as they can, see as many things rather than cooning themselves away, or do you just let them go about their own way? How do you to deal yeah, with look, I don't think it's... A it's about telling them to go and watch as many. You know, most most uh, professional rugby players probably don't watch a lot of rugby. Um, probably get a bit sick of it. But uh, the tournaments to be enjoyed as well as uh, you know, we've got to win games. But you want to be here and enjoy it. It's got to be enjoyable. We we know if we get the the enjoyment and the learning uh, in good balance, then we usually get good performances on on a given weekend. So. That's something that we've used for a long time and we'll continue to use it. And uh, We have a lot of rules in our team, but we have a lot of expectations. So the guys know what those expectations are. and um, you know, They're expected to look at the opposition they're playing against and have a good idea of uh, an understanding of how the opposition play. Uh, but does that mean they, they have to be glued to the TV set for every day of this next two months, if we're lucky enough to be here for that long? Uh, no. They're not too many points, but they can have one if they want one. But um, yeah, look, again, it, it's about connecting with the people. You know, we're here in Teddington and Richmond and, and London. You know, it's just one of the great cities of the world, London. I, I love the place, and you know, getting out and about and, and meeting the people in those cities. Like we get to go to uh, Newcastle. We've never been there before. I, I know uh, we'll look forward to that. Um, and and uh, you know, mixing with the people up north will be great, so that is encouraged because it gives you a, a real feel of what's going on. Steve, Steve um, we saw the match winning try to Alice Park. Have you, has the last week been useful in terms of tweaking the finer detail? Um, well, since, since we've known the team's been good for that, actually. Um, our first five games of the year were tough. We had 41, but we wanted 41 because if we lose uh, people, we Injury, uh, guys have experienced what it's like to be in a, a training week uh, and in the test environment. Um, but once we've named the, the 31 to come, the anxiety of am I going to be picked or not being picked has uh, dissipated, and and we've been able to get on with some good work and get some real clarity in what we're doing. And you know, I think we've trained well this week. Uh, hopefully, that's reflected on Sunday. Um, but you know, whatever happens Sunday, I know we'll get better. Uh, 
game by game and um, you know, that's the aim is to keep improving and, and, and uh, taking games with you know, a really high level of, of quality and, and uh, success and effectiveness that you, you, know, you win games. Steve, just on Dan at first spot. One last question, guys. One last question. Do you want it, Liam? Yeah, give him one. There you go, there you go. Knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in terms of the, the pool as a whole, what's it like in your, the biggest threat early? Is that, is that a good thing? No, it's not ideal. Like you would have liked to have had a, a warm up game. I'm sure Argentina would say the same thing, but yeah, you know, it is what it is, and we can't change it. I don't think England 215 would allow us to do that, so we haven't bothered asking. But um, it, it is what it is, and you know. We know it's, it's a little bit like the, the talk of you know, Paul not being that strong. We know what we've got, so we've just got to modify what we do during the week to make up for that. One last one. I'm just going to ask you about Dan. Obviously, he's had a you know interesting journey to get back to the World Cup and be starting at first five. Can you give us a sense of how he's feeling? Dan Carter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pretty good, I think. I, I haven't sat down and asked him how he's feeling today, but he looked, he looked pretty good when he was at training. Um, he, he's gone through a tough period, I think, uh, with injuries there for a while. Like, he just couldn't get on the park. I don't think we could get three test matches out of him in a row. But that's behind us. It's well behind him, and, and he's got a lot of confidence. He's been back playing regularly and playing well. His last test match was superb. You know, very close to him at his very, very best. So um, he's like everybody, you know. We'll probably need the game this weekend, but... But uh, I'm sure he'll, whatever we get this weekend from him, he'll improve uh, throughout the tournament. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you.